I'm Michael Fairman, and I am here at Donna Mills House in her library with three very special guests, and I'm so thrilled to do this interview. It's the interview I've wanted to do for 30 years, and it's finally happening. Um, How many years? 30. And, 30. and she's only 32. And she's only th- <laughs> <laughs> And look who I'm with, Joan Van Ark, Michelle Lee, Donna Mills, and we're doing this interview to honor Knott's Landing's 40th anniversary. As you guys know, Knott's premiered back in 1979 at the end of December and ended its run in 1993. And we have been celebrating. There's lots of stuff coming up with the 40th anniversary. And you can't have a 40th anniversary without the leads of the show, <laughs> who were these three women who made that cul-de-sac rock, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> basically. Um, so we want to take a little trip down memory lane and to talk to them about working on the show and together. And I think I'll start with Donna. I mean, you came into the show, not you weren't the, on the original season. Right. And they brought you in. Second so wh- season. when they said, we're bringing you into the show, did you know how much you were going to stir things up as Abby? I didn't really, because when I got the show, I had never seen it. And um, I thought it was a show about a houseboat with Andy Griffith. <laughs> Another one of those? Another one of those? You did not. I swear. Wait, you thought it was? So they said Knott's Landing, and you're like, is it a comedy? Knott's Landing. It was a cruise ship. It was a cruise (laughs) ship is what it was. I only began to really realize in the first season, somewhere late in the first season, this show could really cook. This show could really Don't you be think a huge hit. That they wanted you on the show, yes, because that's exactly what they wanted you to do. They wanted you me had to stir know. up Look the at this pot. face. <laughs> stir up the, yeah, right. Jeez. <laughs> and you said, "I can do that." Yeah. Yeah. You know, but they wanted the pot stirred up, and it wasn't serialized. The first. That's right. You know, and I kept saying, "You have to," you know get them from week to week, you know, with a, Draw with a them teaser. Draw them and, and so never end the stories, keep the stories going. What did you think when they said, we're doing a spinoff, we're featuring you and Ted Shackelford as Gary and Val, we're moving them to the cul-de-sac. <sighs> were you like thrilled or were you like, oh my no, God, how's well, this going to work? Well, here's the thing. David Jacobs uh, invited me over to the uh, Warner Brothers lot. Uh, it's when uh, well, Lorimar was there on the Warner Brothers lot. And it was a sort of temporary trailer, raining cats and dogs, about this time of year, January, February, raining all the time, and he said, uh, because I had guested on Dallas and done a lot of spitfire scenes with Larry Hagman and all the wonderful people on Dallas, because I was a uh, sort of a, a reoccurring character, right. he said, we now, CBS now, after establishing Dallas, want to do a spinoff moving you and Gary to a cul-de-sac in <laughs> California. <laughs> then she found out I was Jewish, and she said, no! <laughs> no! That was not going to do it. That was the end in of the it. In the neighborhood. That was the end. <laughs> so, so we spun off and uh, did the pilot, and I remember being with Michelle in a very, because many times the cul-de-sac was windy, 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 windy. We were doing the pilot, and Michelle said, <laughs> This will never go. It'll never sell. It'll never. This is just too. You know, it was. Uh, you'd get hair and makeup done and all that, and then you'd go into a tornado wind, wind storm. Uh, so I said, yes, it will. I have this gut feeling that in fact this series will go, and the rest is history. What, 13, 14 13, years later? Yeah. Yep. So and there still it was. today, as I was telling the, the ladies earlier, that you guys, the fans, you constantly love this show. You comment, you want it back, you want to see a reunion. Do you think there'll ever be a reunion again? Well, it's again? strange a that, reboot? in fact, we haven't because, you know, all these shows are being rebooted and, and mm-hmm. brought back. And, you know, nobody loved us but the people because it could be rebooted in a magnificent way where it's this generation against whatever are the offspring or grandchildren right. or whatever. And I hate to say grandchildren, I do. <laughs> yeah. But but the bottom line is that it could be rebooted in a wonderful way. Yeah. And it, it would is be so, so interesting, interesting to, to see, see where these characters are today. Yeah. Yes. After 40 years. Where are they? I think the truth is that nowadays, it's not all over at 20-something, 30, 40, 50-something even, that there are vital, wonderful, productive people doing reinventing themselves and doing different things, oh, I always wanted to or whatever, so that our generation would have wonderful, interesting, multiple stories. And Michelle, talk to me about being the moral center Okay, Karen. each of us, Karen, Yeah. moral center, I think each of us had a certain thing about them that represented 
our audience. And so for, this one was always trying to find a way in her heart and live the way yeah. th she, thought, she thought she should be living. This one lived all over the cul-de-sac, <laughs> okay? And, and I, bad. she just <laughs> wanted, okay? And that's why one would call me the moral center. For me, the thing that I really liked about my character was I felt that at that moment of time, I most represented the women out there. Yeah. Or what one aspires to be. This one would have these amazing monologues. Monologues. Yeah, these amazing monologues written Until usually Michael. by David Jacobs and or Michael Feilerman or the wonderful team we had. Which, by the way, that's the thing that helped keep it going for, what, 13, 14, 14 years? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Was writing. the writers. Yeah. The but writing. this one spoke Fabulous writing. what we aspired to in the, the, the right way, I guess. She tried say. to do things the right way that she thought the right way was. Right. And, and very community-minded. Right she and always tried, Karen always tried to do, do the, the right, right thing. thing. You know, she was the person who you could count on if something was going off the tracks. Karen, Karen would take it and put it, to put it on back on. Especially when I started taking pills. Yeah, that was... Yeah, that was... I well, was but that was, that, but was, that was great, too. Because it was a vulnerability. It's great. That was the wonderful thing about all the characters. They all had vulnerabilities, which makes them interesting which and deep. And the writers allowed that to show that part of the characters. They weren't one-dimensional. No. They, they had facets that were that you had the moment and the time and you thought, ow, oh, that's great. I'm gonna show you guys some clips in a little bit, but I was talking with Donna and one of the things with Abby was, when you saw Abby with her children, she was a different person. Yes. You saw a well-rounded, you saw that she was a mother lion. You saw that she cared, she wasn't just this raving, manipulative, you know, cunning, you know, she no, loved no. her children. Right. Loved and the relationships children. that she would <laughs> succeed in having. And yeah. then when she was with the child, it was the mother cat with the kittens. And that's yeah. a wonderful yin-yang. And she had her vulnerabilities too. I mean, even when she was the manipulative person, if she went in a room by herself, you could, they would allow her to cry. To show it. To show it. And that was brilliant mm -hmm. because it kept everybody in touch with her, yeah. you know? She wasn't just this woman who could do no wrong and blah, blah, blah. She had feelings, she had, but she didn't show anybody. That's right. The audience got to see it now that's and then. That's right, yeah. But nobody else. Nobody but else. that's cool oh. for actresses to have that opportunity, to have those, that yeah. many colors. Do you remember when you first met Michelle and Donna, what your first impression was? What did you think? What'd you really think? Well, bitch. They, I knew exactly right away. They hated what a me. bitch. No, she, the first day that she filmed. <laughs> Did she really? The, she said, what? You hated me. No. Did you hate her? No, what I hated her. Did I'll you tell you why. Her? No, I didn't. Because she, well, I, until this moment, there was a break. <laughs> until this moment. So I gave her an hour and I loved her for an hour. But then we an sat hour. down. It was an outdoor scene and there were Oreo cookies there. And this gorgeous thing, <laughs> bitch, she, she but she, I, we all didn't know it. She would eat one after the other of these things, and she still looks like that. I run 25 miles You're a day. the runner. You were the, the runner, runner, and they wrote that into the show. Oh, Val was David the runner. did that. Wasn't that great? I, oh, because That I they wrote that in, because so, she yeah? was a runner. Yeah, I knew that about Yeah, they put that you. in, because yeah. that's what they also did. The writers always were, you could march up to the office and yeah. talk to them yes. and say, yeah. what about, and I don't feel this is right. And we used to have table reads at the, at the beginning for the first couple few years and 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 we would trade ideas then but there was the door was never closed right it was open and we could talk about what we didn't feel was right I know she did and right. I know you for sure did yeah and that collaboration is what makes a show be family and strong and go as we did go for that many years yeah. Michelle what was your initial reaction of meeting Joan and Donna honestly forget her yeah, that's right. No, We're honestly, I'm not, I don't want see, to talk about her see right what this I had, second. Okay. See what I'm I had to put up with? <laughs> this one went on. Sorry, I, uh, I'll start with you, because I, I actually met her You first. met her first. You right. met Joan first, of course. I, I was instant love, I think. No, I'm serious. I just, you know when someone is real and honest and there, and she showed that to me the very first day. No, you know when someone's kind. Now we get to Donna. <laughs> Enough with kind of, on, on the... No, Donna. <laughs> no, Donna was always that. Donna was always quiet, unlike me. Quiet, <laughs> intense in another kind of way. 
inside. She knew precisely what she wanted. She was intelligent about the world around her and what she wanted to be, A, on the show and, and what she would represent on the show. I knew that. I knew that going in. And still to this very day, and I mean this as a total compliment, we've, we have said how you look so goddamn demure and then who oh, me no and she's she's yeah. <laughs> very quiet about whatever is going on and then she makes her self known in terms of what she feels is right or what's going wrong and a lot of respect is there for that and you can't do a show like this without it and what was your impression of meeting these two for the first time gosh i don't remember it <laughs> no, probably because but you know it's hard, but you know you come into a family. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah right. Yeah. She had to come in to yeah. the group, yeah. right? Yeah. The group and she was the one going to be a main character. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And everybody so had was... been there already for one season, right? And then you come in. And, and, and you know, sister-in-laws, right? Correct. And to... we didn't get along. I mean, not us personally, but I thought you liked. <laughs> You didn't get along. See how gullible she is? Um, no, in the show, you know, we didn't get along from the very beginning. Um, and then Don Murray left, yeah. which made yeah. it even worse because yeah. he wasn't there as a buffer between our characters right. now I'm talking yeah. about. But I, when I came in, I mean, I was just happy to be there. And, and you know, they, they were really nice. Um, but it was hard. <laughs> that line were you guys reading, like? Were you guys? That you guys, line of nine. <laughs> were you guys? Nine. Oh my God! Were you? Were, did it? Was it competitive and like? Well, it, it was. It's frightening for Blondie to see, oh, look over and see this. No, really. But but the thing is, it was gold. We had this meeting too, which was the beginning of their affair, uh, Gary and uh, yeah, Abby's. Abby. I remember walking out of there and said, I, I don't know. If, if I, you know, did something positive here or not, and sure enough, but it was so positive because it just fed us of with course. stories for like, years. Yes, and, and there's years. a great scene of me marching across the cul-de-sac to confront her, which and which ends up with me giving her a slap. slap. Yeah, yep. it's great. Yep, I mean that's that's iconic. I mean it's just <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things that lasts. When Don Marie left the show and was killed off the show, you received an Emmy nomination for your work. In that, do you remember? I think they felt sorry for me. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, no, no. remember. I mean, do Dug you remember? Down deep. It was pretty amazing. Do you remember doing those scenes and oh, with about, him? You mean after, after he, he died? died, or you're listening oh. to the scenes phone with him after he died? No, no, yeah, no. I used to hold his hand up and say, <laughs> "Honey, I love you. <laughs> I love you so." Wave once. Was there, was there was wave twice. You were listening you to his voice on the voice message, and yeah. yes. What yeah. do you remember about that? Are them telling you? Did you know Don was going to leave, or how did that? I did know he was going to leave. I thought it wasn't a good idea. Um, I'm sure he thinks that today. <laughs> no, what what we all knew is that he had written a uh, pilot or something for himself that David said, yay, go ahead. Of course, it didn't work out. But I was really afraid because, again, as I was every woman, he was... Every man. Every man. Every man. Yep. And I thought the audience is going to go crazy because it leaves her alone. And the only thing that was good about it, but Kevin Dobson came into the show. Mm, yeah. And oh. that's what was good about it. And the fact that I was able to work with a lot of different men at that time. She's but always worked with a lot of different men. <laughs> <Yes>. I know. <laughs> it's one for Michelle. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Nor could they. But you were able to create on-screen magic with both Don Murray and Kevin Dobson. Mm. People loved you with mm. Mac and Karen. They were rooting yeah. for them. Yeah, Sid. that was scary. How is it going to work out? Because Sid, who was older, I don't mean old, but he was older than Kevin was. Right. And so there was the sense of a stability with a mature man taking care of his family. Okay? And then you're scared because he was such a great actor and so respected in our industry. When he was working in a scene, I swear, everything would stop 
and people would just watch him work. It, I, it, period. When he was doing when scenes. When he was doing scenes? He, yes, they would. And everybody to the last day he worked there called him Mr. Murray. Thank God Kevin became who he was on the show because, again, it was so much fun to watch him and he was such a good actor and just had a great sense of humor. And I think that's why they connected with us. And the other men that were, of course, were Ted Shackelford and William Devane. Oh, William what, Devane. Can you talk about working with uh, those guys? Uh, I mean, how lucky. You were. I, yeah. I mean, I feel so lucky to be have worked with both of them. With Bill, you never knew what he was going to do. What a fabulous You never actor. knew, he, and it oh was my God. wonderful. So you I mean, liked not, you liked not oh, knowing what it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you never know. You turn around and he could be laying on the floor. And that was his interpretation of what, what the scene was about or something like that. And it was like, kept you fresh all the time because you had to kind of keep up with him. And then I slept with him. Karen did? Karen did not. Or, or Michelle did. No, Michelle did. <laughs> Michelle did. <laughs> Karen did? Or Michelle Lee? That's Karen, Karen, story. Did. Karen did but not sleep right. with Sumner. No, no that was me no. being smart. I had only one scene with Bill Devane, but to tie in what Donna said, the scene wasn't working, it's, and it was an office scene and kind of cold and stiff and whatever. He called the prop man over, whispered something in his ear, whatever. They brought him a big cigar, and he smoked the cigar throughout the whole... <sighs> <laughs> I just blew it in my face, which was such a commentary on the character and okay. uh, on his character yeah. and on what yeah. on the challenge he, he would could put always in. find the thing that made it interesting and and wonderful. I mean, and he was sometimes amazing. Sometimes what he would do if he didn't like a scene, he he would go into his room and he'd go to cross out, cross out. Yeah, yeah. David, I've. Rewritten the scene 3BA. <laughs> okay, I'm going ahead. Bye. Mm -hmm. And he would rewrite a lot. Of course, he just had that magic and he had that talent for yeah. writing. Yeah. As a director, I, you know, I directed many of the show and shows, and whenever it was a scene with him, I would pray because I never knew. What was going By on? him changing what he's doing, changes my homework. Yeah. Whatever I've had to do, and I pray, so, and then he changes the scene and the yeah. dialogue. <laughs> it's just funny. Well, yeah, there, you great. know, there is, a, of course, the classic clip of when Laura, you know, has her videotape message oh, to oh, everybody. Yeah. And I, Talk it is still the most gut wrenching tear jerker to this day that I can still watch, still cry. Karen's reaction, then Val and that they're getting into a fight, everybody, and then Devane goes by himself oh. and watches that moment of her saying goodbye to him. I still think to this day it is the most fabulous it is. performance. It's just, it's just beautiful work. All I know is, is that uh, that I really want to see you again, and that I want to be with you again. And I want to love you again, and I want to feel your love again. So, so actually, I really don't want to say goodbye. <sighs> Just that I love you very, very much. And I'll see you later. Maybe. You left me in a bad spot, Red. No, what was your thought when I'm they wrote see. her out, when she was leaving the show? What was your thought of how that all oh, kind of went? Any time anyone left. How do you feel oh, it's about hard. that? Any was time, it hard? Yeah. yeah. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. realize we'll be how at the many great actors there? You had Alec Baldwin. Uh, Ava, uh, Ava Gardner. Gardner. Julie Harris. Howard I mean, Duff. Duff. I mean. Yeah, the list. I mean, uh, Halle Berry was also on it for yeah. a while. Gary Sinise, I believe, was. I yeah. mean, the list of the cast that yeah. during that time came through the gate, amazing. so to speak. It that really is was amazing. Impressive, yeah. impressive. And it they did it because they knew the show was quality. That's what I was just going to say. It meant mm -hmm. that that the show had a, 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 a DNA that they wanted, to, were happy and proud mm -hmm. to be a part of. And, and they that's a compliment. The money. Did and you, they wanted the check. Did you did you feel like you know Dallas and Falcon? They were getting all the credit, and you guys were doing this great work, and it, they weren't. Did you feel like the little engine that could? 
Oh, he Rude. took her line. Oh, did I? <laughs> yes. Well, Joan and I think alike. <laughs> what what sign are you? Always said Capricorn. It. Oh, Gemini. Well, never okay, mind. Never mind. My yeah. mother was okay. Gemini. I'm Cancer. Oh, in case anybody wants to be <laughs> wrong. You know, I, I, at that time, I didn't think that so much because we'd get our ratings every week, and they were huge. Mm -hmm. We we won the time slot every single we didn't day. Get the, we for, didn't get the ink. Is the thing we yes, didn't get the correct. Ink. Yeah, and, and we that... didn't get the nominations and stuff mm -hmm. like right. that. There were the nominations that didn't happen. Right. Do you guys look back? I, of course, I know the clothes and the wardrobe. I know you've got an opening at the Hollywood Museum coming up. What do you think of the clothes? And what do you think about the way you looked back then? Oh. And the shoulder pads and the hair. She and... had great stuff, and Nicolette Sheridan had great Nicolette stuff. Nicolette Sheridan, great so stuff. So I would borrow off that rack, because they're both <laughs> tiny people, that I would borrow and wear when I wanted to be Joan Van Arn, and not Valine, because Valine wore a man's shirt and blue. Valine, <laughs> I thought Valine, poor Valine. Poor Val. Poor Val. Poor Val. Poor Val. We're going to yes. get into poor Val yeah. in a minute. There's lots no. of poor Val. The whole think... beginning of the show, the first years of the show, I was always in jeans. Always. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I lived on this cul-de-sac. It was, no, <laughs> I really, know, I was I this woman, as all of them were, in jeans and tops. But you looked great. But I, I looked say. great. You, you know, I think you were the contemporary, you were supposed to represent yeah, the, con no, that's, the contemporary cul-de-sac. I'm, cul I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. I'm <laughs> saying it was perfect. Right. That's another thing that Abby did. She brought fashion yes. into oh, yes. Definitely the, the glamour. thing. The glamour. You were the was, glamour. And yeah. it was important. Yes. Women tuned in to see the what fashion. Yes. They loved yes. the fashion mm -hmm. on the show. And it was highly fashionable. You look at some of those outfits that we had. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, the they were photo amazing. shots often were, you know, everybody done up, but Abby that was 24/7. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, even even if I was in the boudoir, I had, you know, oh, well, <laughs> Neiman Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Was used to meet no jammies Neiman's for me. And, no. <laughs> PJs or long johns, uh-uh, not <laughs> no, the absters. No onesies. Not the absters. So when you're out in public and somebody comes up to you, what do they say to you the most? Do they go, Val, Karen, they call you by your actor's name? When they're regarding Knott's Landing, what do they usually say to you? What do they remember? I liked you better than the other two. <laughs> He's heard that so many times. So many times. I do. I do. There you is. What they say? When are they going to do a reboot? That's what I was just going to say. They say that to you, right? When, are they, All when is the it coming time. back? When, yep. when, it's overdue. And yep. They're right. <laughs> what would you but, love to see? Where would you love to see Karen doing now? If they brought Karen back, what do you think she'd be doing? What do you want her to do? You know what? That is because sometimes our world can be, I don't mean to bring this now, but our world can be very depressing. And Karen was, I mean, in terms of the stuff that goes on and has to, uh, certainly now. And Karen was always one that was fighting for anything. She was fighting for gays yes. then. Yeah. Yeah. It was ERA, and we're still fighting for it. Yeah. You know, and politically involved. And um, so I don't know. It'd be real tough for her, I yeah. think. She'd yes. be the same Correct. place. Correct. She wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you what know do you what think? I would love to see? Think? I would love to see Abby, who has fallen upon hard times. Yeah, and she's homeless. Great. I, that's, see? And Flip. let's watch her climb, climb her way up. back up. Flip the now. switch. Yeah. I'm and, not going to watch And that. Corbell <laughs> maybe isn't Corbell. Maybe, no, Bell, maybe Bell's a no, corporate... She, like, that's who exactly that's 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 business. That would be the switch. The switch would be... Doing the flip side of Bell. She's a monstrously wealthy woman, powerful... Running some company, running some studio, running something... that's the kind of things that can happen in life. I mean, that could have happened to Abby. Something happened, whatever. All one of her schemes fell apart. and Right, and delicious. She put everything, all her money into it, and it all fell apart. Hard and there she is. I have selected some clips to show the ladies of some scenes from Knots over the years. There was nothing like the three-year storyline where Val wanted to get her twins back oh, about getting please. the babies back. Cry. There was nothing more emotional, gut-wrenching. Thank you. It was just the best. And the only time yeah. the show was and number one. It was the only time the show was number one. She yeah. Right and it incorporated all of you and Joan going through this, but this is called The Long and Winding Road, this episode, and this oh. was the cliffhanging moment when she actually sees the twins, but doesn't get them. Doesn't get to see them right away. Really? So let's watch what happens. Me and I'm okay. I've always leaned on you. It does look like Patrick. Just 
miss Terry, but he should be back soon. Mrs. Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't quite know how to say this. Even if... Even if you're aware of it, but... Mrs. Fisher, your baby was adopted, right? Yeah. Well, we adopted two. Twins, actually. Shh, Angel. What's this all about? Your babies were adopted illegally. No. They were taken from their natural mother without her permission. That's not true. Yes. It, yes, it is true. We found the doctor who was responsible. I mean, I mean, I mean, that was the best cliffhanger <laughs> to end the season on. It was so gut wrenching, and every all of you were in it. And that story. Do you remember oh, doing God. that, John? But I don't. I, that not as much as coming down the stairs when, in fact, they were. You yes. the babies back. That, that's that what I. Your house. Magic that was at Johnson. The house. Yes. I told when I met him at a, uh, a party for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and I'm not just name dropping. It's just because yes, I was a Laker. Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. The Lakers, <laughs> a Laker fan. Laker, here. truly, yes. At that time, at especially that time. '80s basketball with the Lakers. But the truth is, Magic Johnson told me details about that return. But what I love is that you, in fact, this is one of those moments when you said, "I need to be part." This isn't right about stealing the twins and letting it be. Uh, uh, that's again a maternal black mark with Abby as a character right, yeah. against Valley. Uh, I, I told them. I told them if what? they if they had me steal. That's what, that was their original idea that I was going to be the one that stole the baby. Right, and it got. And changed. I said no, Abby wouldn't do, do that. that. If, See, if you don't, if you want Abby off the show. There would no, there'd be no way for her to come back from right. that. Exactly. There would have been no way. Exactly. So they had to make it like it got the guy overheard it and she didn't know, and it was all that, right? And right. this is so much richer because it had the core, right. uh, you and Kevin, and, and uh, bringing them together on, on a successful thing. But it, it was so, that was the most emotional story. And then the first, must have been the first episode of the new season is when that in, uh, reunion yes. happened. Yes. And that was... That was a tearjerker for sure. I mean, do you remember it was a three-year... This thing went on for three seasons. 
the, ba- the baby yeah, could have the baby. been four. Because, no, really? I mean, because it had that many, that it much eggs. Like, it, it had, had legs. legs. Yeah. I mean, there was the scene where Karen and and Mac cornered the doctor, and they're going to get the information. Then he shoots himself. So then, I mean, yes. I mean, it just kept oh going. Oh my god! Yes, yeah. it well, kept you know, going. Yeah. What I see in this, and then you look at contemporary TV, which is also brilliant, but it, it's something about the investment of the richness of the characters that made this that they took the time and that they did it like this and uh, the intercuts and everything that it i think that the core people who loved watching this show felt they knew each one of us 100%, the characters 100%. They, knew, they, they 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 rooted oh for, my god i know I, where do we go from here <laughs> this is how great she was when olivia she oh. was olivia's drugs oh. She was always good with a pickaxe. She was great with a pickaxe. I love that she was like, nothing is gonna stop her. Nothing's gonna stop her. But she's still doing it. So how many times? That's the gift because you take a character like Abby that we all knew and the fingerprint we know so well and you see it this and that is also, this makes me emotional at the core of Donna. I figured that out because she is that when it comes down to the short strokes of it and with Chloe, her beautiful daughter in life, that's the strong thread that everybody has and talk about relatability that's what makes shows last a long time and characters yeah. live in mm-hmm. people's memories for a long long time because yeah. of that do you remember mm-hmm. doing this yeah oh, do, now that i see now it. that you see yeah. it and tanya yeah. crow and you yeah. what do you think about that and the story and i love it the was story such a great line. story line. i love the storyline because I, th- I thought like you said it was important Yes, it was an important, and I've had so many message. people write to me and tell me and everything. You showed me how to deal with deal. my kids' drug problem. Get real, and he, it's the best thing in the world if you know that your work has helped somebody. Give them you know? the courage to Not do what they Not just giving them yeah. entertainment, and I mean that's all wonderful. But if they can actually help them with some problem in their life, we have to watch. Karen, 
Do we have doing to? Doing what? I'm going to watch her Pollyanna speech. Okay. I knew it! <laughs> You're right on. 50 years, Polly. I am not a Pollyanna. Huh. Not now, not after what was done to me. And that's why I feel place. so angry. What, that you're not a Pollyanna? I want to be a Pollyanna. I don't want to look at the world through rose-colored glasses. I want the world to be rose-colored. I want people to be nice. People should be nice. Nice should be the norm. I hate it that I can't trust anyone. I hate it that I can't put my daughter on the front lawn by herself. I hate it that I have to lock my car and I have to worry about an alarm system in my house and I can't send cash in the mail. That's not the way it's supposed to be, Gary. I liked being a Pollyanna. I want to be a Pollyanna. Oh. Oh. Do you remember getting the speech? And, yes. Okay, and what did you think of it when you got it? The reason I, I think people remembered that speech is it was at a point of time, it was during the Reagan years, and there was a point of time during the Reagan years where there was a lot that one felt about the haves and the have-nots. And people started to rob because they needed, they, you know, they, they would take from the mail. And there was a story about a child being taken from the front lawn, from her front lawn. So all this was happening at one time. And when I said the speech, it was right when this whole thing turned and we all worried about the same thing. They identified with it. That's why. That's and always. Isn't the, it the same today? Yeah, I was I just mean, thinking. Right? It's I mean, now. well, it never went away. And it's worse. Yeah, I, I mean, it I think got it got worse. better for a while, but it's, it's worse, worse now, now than it was then. because of the climate. Yeah. But you had the monologues. Did you not have a lot of this these? This one had, but you had a I lot had too. Had a lot. When I started getting, she was just busy flirting. <laughs> yeah, that's usually short, no. sen short you sentences, short sentences, and lots sentences. You and don't have twerking. many monologues in bed. No, no. <laughs> no. 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 But oh, I have much. Never, you'll never <laughs> find it. I know. I'm. I. This is me talking too much yet again. Before you go into yours, I had a long monologue in one scene early on, and it was very difficult to do. And it was like maybe five minutes of this monologue. <laughs> and I'm talking to this guy who wanted to sleep with me. He was much younger. And we they kept the audience thinking, oh, maybe she's going to. And I had, and I talked about life. And I talked about why not. And how I feel and why I was attracted to him. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you heard... <laughs> Bye. Okay. Not a pigeon. Not a pigeon. Was, not a pigeon. This is for um, Joan. That's this one scene in all the television that I've done that I'm uh, I'm proud of. That's before I go to the thing. But when I come back and scrub my face, because God knows, I, the scrubbing, scrubbing face my one face was a big emotional thing. That, that was. I don't know was, how, that was such, you know what? No. I, 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 do oh. I know what's <laughs> done? All so, right, but you know. remember doing this and... Oh, I remember more than anything because I said, if we do, because it was my idea to wash my face. I called, uh, first oh, I, I talked to the director. That. Yes, I, 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 it was my idea. If they wanted me to change from Valley Newney, Ewing to Barna Ehlers, who's the waitress where Abby then comes down and rescues and gets me out of there. She always saved the day. Oddly but she enough, looked like she wasn't going to save the day. No, she like she's going to turn her in or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would save the day. No, she saved the day because she's a mom, and that's yeah. why we love her. I said, if you want me to really change, change, I've got to take off the hooker makeup, which I'm putting on in this scene here. So, so she puts on the makeup, goes to the bar, nothing but guys. I loved the filming that day. It was all guys and just me. I loved it. And and then she comes back to the motel and goes and looks in the mirror and sees how horrible she looks because she got a little drunk and, blah, and she washes her face and I said if this isn't working for some camera reason stop because once this face is washed it's a wrap yeah and we can't. had one false start and you can't start over with all that was on and the care and we had one false start and then we had one that played right straight gorgeous through. Little white trash. <laughs> no, nothing. 
think, Verna? I think that you owe it to yourself to go on a shopping spree. Buy yourself some pretty new dresses. Because you are going home. And if you're going home, Knots Landing writers uh, and, the, and the crew allowed us the long monologue that was if they didn't snore with all her, the, the whole the whole juicy actor's work. That was the gift to us that made us want to come to work every morning because uh, th th this this monologue. Uh, everybody at the end, it was like the end of uh, Mary Tyler Moore when they all did the, the, hug, the Wait, goodbye. are you talking about you taking off the makeup? Yeah. Yeah, I, because I'll say something, too, that was so wonderful about the take and how they shot it. Because she was doing this, we saw her through her mirror. And therefore, while she was doing it, it was over her shoulder, and we saw her face in the mirror. And we were able to, as an audience, really see everything mm -hmm. changing. Yeah, moments um, yeah. moments from who the hell am I, what am I, and the anger and, the, and everything was on your face. Do you remember when mm -hmm. they had Jill Bennett, Terry Austin, make you take pills? and was oh, poor. I have yes. that too, I won't, but, but oh. it was poor Bell, and they tried to make you oh, take the pills at yes. gunpoint. And, and I, they were like, check, she was checking your mouth and pushing uh, Yes, it. and what she had it? this gun. It took Bell. two or three days to shoot that one scene. Two or three days, I think definitely two long days. And uh, that was the cliffhanger. And all I could think, as any one of us would have, is when I read that script, that she's jamming a billion pills, pills down my throat with a gun at my head, that, that, that goodbye, Joan, it's been nice, it's been fun. <laughs> really See you later, but too See much you later, bye. Come on, I haven't got all night, Belle. I have a plane to catch. Now take the ones in your hand all at once. Come on. Drink. Swallow. <clears throat> All right. Open your mouth. I want to see. <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, swallow. Swallow. I can't without water. I can't. And you got I shot went right one year. Up. Like, I got did shot you think you got shot? Uh, the reason I loved getting shot was watch this. No, watch <laughs> the this. reason I loved right. getting shot. So watch this. Other than that. <laughs> oh, now, in it's slow mo. Almost, in yes, slow it's almost motion. like this one's hair when she's seeing her, I her saw child. That. I was going to make a <gasps> remark. Oh, that hair. It looked like a hair commercial. You got shot a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. You got no, shot I the one once. time. And then you were in car that. accidents, right? Yeah. 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 A couple of those. Do you remember working with Alec Baldwin? We were looking at both of us. Yes, I loved. I played his sister. I played his <laughs> <laughs> His other sister. They were twins, joined at the neck. <laughs> twins, one was blonde and one was brunette. <laughs> but he was Joshua and he became weird and like on the show where he was like culty and he was this Bible thing and right mm -hmm. and was, they had to get rid of, get rid of I, him. I don't mean that. I mean he the character he was got set. so bad. He, he, he was set for X amount of episodes. Yeah. yeah, well he was actually just guesting kind of like for two or three. And they you know, I marched up to the office right after doing the first scene with him and said, Where did you find this one? This is amazing. And he was there the whole rest of the season, into the next and then Bye bye. But uh, I, I don't know where he is now. He's struggling somewhere. To... What? Oh! No, 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 no. Wow. Nobody's ever heard wow. of him. <laughs> right. Yeah, poor guy. He's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Is there anything that you did as Karen that sticks out to you that we haven't touched upon? The magical romantic comedy that, that yeah. Kevin and I yes. did all the time. 
was so much fun. And it's also another reason that Knott's was what Knott's was. Because we, it wasn't all soap. It was, there was really wonderful drama, was a poignancy, and a lot of humor. Yeah. And I think you can see that the, the actors loved one another. So I think that is like between the lines. So that whatever it was, there was a many, many clips of, uh, they did a couple times, she said, of slapping Abby, everybody in the cast. Was slapping and Abby. Crew. Yes, took there a is a slapping. A, there was a, turns was that a, they do a Christmas reel? I don't know. It was something Abby. like that. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. then the crew. Then the crew. Like the, I, I remember it was, that. It was endless. It was endless, endless slaps of Abby. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And you were very good at it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that fake slap. Yeah, the fake slap. Well, this has been so amazing to reminisce and talk to the three of you about Knott's Landing and your roles and your camaraderie. And it's still there today, obviously. So the three of you are very fond of each other. and It's actually you know, richer. Yeah. Do you think yes. it has been? Do you it's think you have a more appreciation for each other over time? I it's, just think it's yeah. deeper because we always had respect at, at working actor, and we were at many events together, all kinds of things back in New York, CBS tributes and things yes. like that. But the fact that we've stayed connected and and joined and yeah. and we're older, not in a good me. way. No, I mean we're older. <laughs> yeah, we've lived life a little bit more, and we understand each other without even thinking about it. It's, yeah. it's like a long lost yeah. friend that walks in the door and you can talk to them as yeah. if Pick you just were just where you left off. And what would Sisters. you want to say to the fans who've like followed you guys for all these years and their constant, you know? I feel they are as um, layered in a good way because they have stayed connected to us. They do miss us. Yeah. And they do state that, and they're always so beautiful when we're in a situation where it's either autographs or uh, uh, it might be a, an event of some or sort or whatever. Interviews. Or interviews, what? whatever it might be. They come up to us and tell us yeah. what it means. And it's, a, it's just, you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for appreciating what we do. You know, and, and I feel so lucky to have had the chance to do it. I'm so happy that they loved it and enjoyed it and still do that's yeah. the amazing thing oh, yeah. 40 years okay 40 years since the show started oh, yeah. and we're the fans are st still clamoring for it so still clamoring for it that's, that's why it begs it begs for not a period on the sentence but something that is dot 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 and now to be continued to be continued, <laughs> to be continued. My, one of my favorite phrases anyway but I get yeah. first billing you always do <laughs> So it's, it's not a problem there. On a personal note, I have to just say, you know, this has been such a wonderful uh, to get to get to do this with you. And Michelle was so gracious years ago. I came up to her at a Grammy Award party. She doesn't know who hell I am. And I'm like, I love you, Michelle. I love you as Karen. And, that's funny. and she was so gracious. She knew I love not slanting. She got me on the show. So I came to the set one day and watched all of you work. On the show, meaning I, I, I was we not were on the show. You didn't I have came a role. in never roll. Show. I came and watched them work. And I was in heaven to get to see them actually working. And then years later, to know each of you, it's been just such a joy. And then to do this today, it, it's been thank one of my you. bucket list interviews of all time. Well, so I want to thank you very well, much for this. Well, we love really that do. and appreciate that. And I just want to ask you then, why do you think that it meant, that it touched you, that it that it did matter to you, that the show was important to um, you? I will say that every Thursday night that I watched the show, I cared so much about the characters. There was such a deep richness in the characters, and I cared about their lives, and I cannot tell you this cast was A-list all mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. Compared to the other shows, in my mind, everybody was, mm -hmm. most everybody was pretty phenomenal on the show. And I love that it's centered around these three women, these three, you had these three female characters who that's really... That's why it's relevant now. That's why it's relevant now. Yeah. Joan, thank you so much. Michelle, thank that's you that. so much. Thank Donna, you. thank you so much. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>